Yes, sir. Okay. All right, I got 6.30, we'll call this the word. And you would stand and have the invitation. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening, praising and magnifying your name, thanking you for all that you've done for each and every one of this world and this town. Father, we ask that your guiding hand be upon our shoulders and part upon us the wisdom and the knowledge to know what is to do for the best of all the citizens of this town and of this area. Be with us in all we do and return that praise back to you for in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, if you would, uh, we'll leave you to pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. They have wrote to him, if you would, would you recite? So yes, sir, I will. To advance a framework for our success through balanced governance, dynamic partnerships, and an engaged community. And Commissioner Brown, if you would, if you recite our solid city vision statement. Solid city is a safe, prosperous, and vibrant community where diversity, innovation, and education drive success in a globally competitive society. All right, thank you. Uh, adjustments to the agenda. Uh, Mayor, I will take a closed session. Excuse me. I didn't hear you. I might close a closed session. Ma'am. Oh, you want to add a closed session? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, really? Really? It has to be your first subsection to discuss the public closed session. Um, is it appropriate that Commissioner Austin approaches you and think what his concern is, or is that to be an open? Well, I don't know. Well, not. Yeah. 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 I don't want to frustrate the closed session by talking about how it will take a break at some point. I can see it. Okay, we can add that in at the end. Yeah. Let me, all right, Commissioner Also. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. We, we do have adjustments, Mayor. Um, now that we have the minute agenda at your table, any items you read? Uh, I don't know. Uh, what for? Uh, Eric Matthews, your comment resolution, 3.5. Kim site water tank project administration, uh, 2.6 Kim site water tank project design and engineering. Uh, we've also added a presentation for Mr. Matthews 4.2. Uh, and we'll have a 5.3 uh, for a public hearing on extending the mayor's term of two years to four years. Uh, and there's also a closed session of reference in bill section A5. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. We're going to approve the oh, agenda. agenda. I'm sorry. As amended. Motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, like signs. The agenda is amended. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. 
Second. Well, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? I can any none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. And that motion carries. All right. Presentation. All right. Just manage you up first. Board. I know we've had several work sessions to discuss our budget. But this time we've gathered together to discuss the 23 24 budget. But in compliance with the North Carolina General Statute, this formula tonight is the town manager's budget presentation highlighting what we're going to see in our upcoming budget effective July 1. Okay, Mr. Chairman. So here are highlights of all of our four major funds. You know, you know, we have four funds in our in our town budget. Our general fund is 10, uh, power bill fund, which is 20, water and sewer fund, which is 30, and our license plate agency is 40. So what you see before you is total figures for fiscal year 2023, which is the year that we're currently in, and in fact, July 1 through June 30 of 24, that's FY24, you see our uh, increase uh, from 18.4 to around 20.6 million dollars uh, for next year. So roughly 2.2 uh, to 6 million dollars or 12 percent increase in the total budget across the entire town of Solid City organization. So in going through this budget process this year, we did something a little different. We didn't have our typical retreat all day and we tried to adopt in the fall, but to keep you plan. So we work together as an organization to try and tie the efforts of our strategic plan into our budget process. That's something that we started this year. It's something that's going to be an ongoing process as we hire a uh, budget manager and going through that role and making sure that we're integrating our priorities and our goals as an organization with how we're aligning our resources as a budget. So for the public here, uh, I want to highlight what we're talking about. So it's our strategic priority one. Facilitate responsible growth and community development. And we lay out a few goals in reference to that. Our second priority was to plan and implement sustainable infrastructure. And that's a large part of why we're seeing an increase in our budget this year is to make sure we're addressing and planning to implement that sustainable infrastructure. Our priority three, we're trying to achieve organizational and operational excellence. We want to make sure that we're able to retrain, retain, track, and develop quality employees. Providing competitive salaries. That's something we're also trying to address in this budget. We're trying to enhance community engagement. Uh, as you know, we've kicked off our process of having our community forum and all of our districts every other month for meeting. We've had two of those so far, and we're going to have our third one, Commissioner Brown's kitchen, that's on June 1st. We're trying to make sure that going through our budget process, we're getting the appropriate level of inclusion across the entire community. And priority five, we're trying to provide a high level of public safety. That's one of the critical services that we provide is making sure that we're keeping the public safe and building the police department over the future. So a few highlights. We're trying to summarize where we're going for next year, really some bullet points, major objectives for next year. We have to balance the budget. That's a statutory requirement. In North Carolina, we can't run deficits. Uh, we don't have the luxury of being the federal government that we can do that. We have to make sure that we bring in the same amount of revenue as what we plan to spend. <laughs> So our budget balances, there is no property tax increase. Uh, we will maintain a certain, the, the same tax rate uh, for next fiscal year. We've also worked to implement a capital improvement plan. That's something we have not we had. We paid for the national plan, but it's never been fully realized. We're going through the process of the long-term vision of making sure we have what we need in the future. We're working to upgrade our water and wastewater facilities. And some of the fun y'all know with the development that we're going to see is within the town that we upgrade water facilities and our wastewater treatment plant as we go through the process of upgrading our wastewater treatment plant from 4 million gallons per day to 6 million gallons per day and beyond. We're working to resolve our mortuary issues. 
That will not happen overnight, but we worked as an agency to get into a special order of consent, along with our friends at DEQ, to make sure that we have a game plan in attacking the four phase process, what we need to do to get out of that more important so that we can have additional residential and business growth um, that's affecting our sewer operations. We did budget an increase to water and sewer rates for new capital projects. So you'll see about $1.7 million in additional revenue from a necessary rate increase. Um, as we discussed in our last work session, you're looking at about 25.44% was what the inflation has been alone since July 2016, the last time rates were adjusted. So it's been seven years since we've been water and sewer rate increase. Uh, and if we're going to keep up with the capital projects that needs to be got going forward, about the time we're going to need to take some action. Uh, we've also invested in public safety, making sure that we meet the needs of the future there. Uh, there's a 7% increase for cost of living for account employees. We're working to improve account streets by making sure that funding for our account streets and power bill is more committed to the service increase rather than other allocations for personnel. We've improved employee benefits in regards to insurance by uh, being able to minimize the increase to a nominal amount while improving the quality of service that our employees are receiving. And we're continuing to invest in parks and recreation. So you'll hear uh, from our, our friends with the revenue on our master plan presentation. Later. So general fund revenues. So these are the revenues uh, in reference to the property tax. General fund is a reminder for us here from most of our town departments. All the services that we provide as an organization, excluding by paving the streets with power bills, water, and sewer, and like the fire department, police department, parks and rec, um, town hall administration from finance to planning, all are essentially paid for through the general fund. And property tax is a substantial part of that revenue source at around half of our entire general fund revenue. And you'll see a slight dip from current year to next year. And why is that? There's a dip in the budget because of people appealing the process with their property taxes. Yeah. So we haven't seen growth because of the moratorium, but we have seen the reduction due to those appeals. So we see a slight reduction of about 1% from where we currently stand. Um, you also see some shifting in where some of the things are allocated. Those aren't due to new revenues. We're trying to make sure we're doing a better job of tracking the revenues from the past so we have a more accurate accounting. So we're creating more line items to make sure there's more transparency and clarity in how we go about our tax process. Sales tax. So sales tax is also another substantial part of our revenue to solve through. So every dollar that's spent in Chatham County. Our city gets a percentage of that, whether it's spent in Goldston or Pittsburgh or Solid City or somewhere in the county. Percentage of that revenue comes back to Solid City. Chatham County in the last few months has seen the largest increase in sales tax of any county in the state of North Carolina. That's good for Solid City because it gives us more revenue to operate key services. But sales tax is not one article. Um, by, by the state, they define several different articles, and we have broken that out. So you'll see previously. Sales tax was essentially lumped together under one article. Now we've broken that out in all the different sales tax articles to also show a more accurate reflection of the types of revenues we're receiving. We get information throughout the year that there might be an increase in sales in some areas, but not others. Video programs, for example, the taxes you pay on your cable bill, maybe some of that declining year after year as people go to streaming services. Having our accurate breakdown gives us more accurate information so we can make um, ready-made decisions as we go through the year. So other general fund revenues, uh, these are all the general fund revenues we have in our budget that are not related to property taxes and sales taxes. So I know that fund is small, so I'm just going to hit quickly hit the highlights because what you'll see, the biggest increase from that is stormwater fee. That's an additional revenue. So you see $463,380. So going through our work session process, we decided it was important to prioritize leaf, leaf collection and also stormwater projects that we have throughout the town that have been neglected for the last few years. And we don't have the revenue in our streets division to appropriately cover these needs, and this will allow us to do that as we go forward. 
And there's also budgeted a 3% increase from GFL, who was our contractor to advise our, our curbside uh, waste pickup. So those are a few of this we have. General fund expenditure. <clears throat> So we did some shifting around this year with the budget when it comes to general fund expenditures. So one of the biggest changes that you're going to see is a substantial increase in buildings and grounds. One of the things that we thought was important was to centralize all of our buildings and grounds functions into one department. Um, we have maintenance that goes on for all of our facilities, but each department has a different approach, different contractors that are utilized. We felt it was important to centralize that service for better economies of scale. That's why you see such a significant increase there. As you know, back in the fall, we did a split of our community development and planning department into two separate departments. So you see planning listed as a separate department. So you maintain community development as a pre-existing department. Uh, planning is a new department for our budget going forward. Uh, you'll also note the library has been moved to 500. 500 is buildings and grounds. The library is not a service that we offer. We simply own the building where the library is. Exists, we felt it more appropriate going forward that those funds be budgeted in that manner. Uh, similarly, in non departmental, we've had funds that cross several departments that we moved to non departmental because we felt that was a more appropriate place to list it. And give the commissioners credit, we have seen a reduction due to paying off of existing debt in our debt service. So our debt service has been reduced by 47%, which is outstanding. Uh, but overall total general fund, you see an increase of around a million dollars or 12%. So our power bill fund. So for those who don't know, power bill is funding that we receive from the state of North Carolina for the paving of streets. Uh, the state of North Carolina requires to spend um, the majority of those funds are as regards primarily the funds must be spent on resurfacing the streets and other items related to that. So when it comes to power bill, we wanted to prioritize uh, the resurfacing of the streets. So you'll see a significant reduction in personnel related costs for the first few line items. Salaries, longevity, overtime, et cetera, have been zeroed out. And we've increased the amount of uh, money you're seeing for paving and resurfacing so that we're able to uh, more effectively resurface our streets or essentially have more money available so that we can meet that service need. Um, you do see a slight reduction when it comes to the expenditures, and why is that? Around eight thousand dollars. That's because, unfortunately, when we went through this last census, it recorded a decrease in population for solitude. So while we can certainly contest that, I feel like we've had an increase in population since the last census. How we were based on the formula? Half of it's based on the population of Solid City, and the other half is based on miles of, of surface street. So it led to a slight reduction of around eight thousand. So water and sewage. So this is where you're going to see an increase. It's around 1.7 million dollars when you look at water charges as well as sewage charges. So you have in front of you uh, a sheet labeled talking points for water and sewer increases. So we did our best to try and emphasize how this is having an impact on not only residents inside and outside of Solar City, but also our commercial businesses and our sole industrial users. So a few highlights of what that means, and just some context there. Town of Tower City currently has 25 water and sewer capital projects completed over the next several years. Capital projects are projects that are so significant that we can't expect to complete them during a single fiscal year, that they roll beyond July 1 to June 30. So that's where we are today. We know that with the growth that we're coming, we will have substantially more water and sewer projects than that. And we'll be adding more projects before we can even close off the projects that we have. That's the, the consequence of significant growth. These water and sewer capital projects total approximately $113 million. And as you know from our report from Freeze and Nichols, we did a water and sewer assessment. We're looking at $400 million in needed water and sewer infrastructure improvements in just the next 20 to 30 years. The county has received $41 million in grants for these water and sewer capital projects. However, we still have a shortfall, shortfall of $72 million. The town, just for context, in our operating budget, our current budget that we're having for, uh, that we're proposing for 24, 
we've seen an increase in chemical costs of three hundred and seventy thousand dollars just for those plants. Just for our water treatment plant and our wastewater treatment plant, three hundred and seventy thousand dollars just in chemical costs. These are costs that we can't defer. These are things that we have to have to operate our plant annually. Along those same lines, sludge removal, which is a critical piece of running the operation of the wastewater plant, is a quarter million dollar increase from the previous year. So just those two revenues alone, you're looking at over half a million dollars, six hundred thousand dollars, and just increased operational costs in just two items. We were projecting that the water sewer rate increase would generate water for about 1.7 million. So in just in context, on the type of level of development that we're seeing in Tyler City. We have projects out there like full speed, a four point eight billion dollar investment. We're looking at four hundred million needed for infrastructure. Um, one point seven million dollars is all we're bringing to the rest of the increase. Um, we've seen the inflation numbers of twenty five point four four. As you know, what we're proposing does not even meet that inflation number from July twenty sixteen. It's around twenty percent. The water and sewer fund expenditures. Uh, we added building new ground to be consistent with the general fund. So you'll see that was zeroed out for the current year, around $900,000. You'll see for the current year, same concept. We have a lot of building maintenance that needs to go on, but we felt that needed to be separated out from regular operations so it can be run through our public works career. And then also <clears throat> increases in the line of park mill. Uh, the decreases you'll see are not cuts in services. You'll see a decrease in the wastewater treatment plant that is seen to offset through that increase in buildings and grounds. Uh, debt service is notable. You see an increase there. That is from our metering project. So throughout the next year, you, we will be going to AMI, which is an automated metering service, so that residents have more responsive metering, more accurate reading of their water and sewer system. So that they can read their meter in real time and have the access to that information instead of just getting it through their monthly water bill, they would have the potential to know at any point in time uh, what their reading is and even an even more accurate level. So that is financed for the next five years, and this is showing the first of those five annual payments. <clears throat> And then finally, our license plate agency fund. So this is a very unique service that we offer in Solid City. There are very few communities that have a license plate agency that's actually part of, of the town government. So this is a, a unique service that we're proud to offer. Um, not, a, not a lot of change that you'll see, but we did have to transfer from the general fund around $33,000. We do not have control over the revenues. The state defines what we're allowed to charge and running that operation. We hire the employees, but revenue is controlled by the state. So as a consequence of that, it is something that we have to pull money uh, from the general fund or essentially from uh, from fund balance because it does not break the rate. This, this is a fund that does lose money, but it is an important service that we offer that we want to continue to fund. So what's, what's left? This is our fifth discussion of the budget, only the, the budget presentation from the manager uh, on June the 5th, which is our first regular meeting in the month of June. We will have a public period. Uh, we're required to offer the uh, budget will be advertised. So anyone who has interest and wants to review the contents of the budget can contact uh, Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson is the budget manager and that can be provided to them. And then on June the 20th, as a reminder, it's a Tuesday. We'll be closed for Juneteenth and in service of that on that Monday. Uh, the budget will be brought to you with the budget ordinance for all of that. Amen. Back in the back. You get on up here to the corner. This ain't that bad, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
And you can die. Yeah. You're not old enough to be tired. I don't know. <laughs> well, we well, just like to say, all these nuns in here to serve. We have a, a proclamation here that needs to be a resolution to hear. So bear with me, I'll go through it. Panel Tile City Resolution. Recognized in 22 years and two months of service by Mr. Eric A. Matthews in the town of Style City Public Works Department. Whereas Eric S. Matthews was hired as a public works laborer in the Style City Street Maintenance Department on March 19, 2001. And whereas Eric S. Matthews became crew leader of the Style City Street Maintenance Department on January 8, 2007. And whereas Eric S. Matthews became equipment operator worker for the South City Street Maintenance Department on March 13, 2023. Whereas his dedicated interest and devotion to duty had a valuable effect on the efficiency of the Street Maintenance Department. And whereas he has reached the age of retirement and desires to devote his efforts and energies in other areas. Now, therefore, he is resolved. That the South City Board of Commissioners and all citizens do hereby express appreciation to Eric S. Matthews for a job well done and wish him well in his future endeavors. This is the 15th day of May, 2023. Thank <laughs> <laughs> Something says we probably had a single man. All right. This trunk will move on to the public hearing. We have a new employee here from our finance department starting today. Uh, Evan, you can stand. So, Evan, Evan started with, with us today as our finance panelist. We finally have a full staff finance department. So, we're very happy to have him joining our team. You want to say a few words? I like it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And now we'll move on to our public hearing. First up, 5.1 R23 0402 additional rezoning Everest Park, Everest Park LLC. Now, open the purpose here. Good evening. Uh, this is page R23 0402 for Everest Park. The owners are Everest Park LLC, the applicant is with the Bob Kinski of Summit Engineering. They're requesting for a conditional rezoning of two lots from agricultural residential to a planned unit development, which will consist of the zoning district of D1, residential 6, and residential 10. The acreage for the property is approximately 293.22 acres. Um, during the April meeting, the planning board did make a recommendation to deny this request in a vote of five to two. Good the planning board recommended denial in a vote of five to two. The subject properties are located south of South Chatham Avenue Extension. 
to the east of Rockley Road and to the west of Bell, Bell Lane as well as Old US 421 South. According to the zoning map, this area is zoned as agricultural and residential and is located in the town um, extraterritorial jurisdiction. The land use map recommends that this area be developed as rural residential. Uh, rural residential is defined as areas with very low density that are either environmentally sensitive or are located beyond the anticipated service area of the town. The subject properties are currently undeveloped and are partially cleared. The applicant is proposing to do a planned unit development, um, which will consist of three zoning districts, B1, R6, and R10 zones. As you can see from the site plan submitted by the applicant, the applicant is proposing to have a buffer of 50 feet around the perimeter. This is a, an increase from the 10 foot required um, by the current Unified Development Ordinance. The applicant is proposing to um, have the development with 429 single family lots, 297 <laughs> townhome lots, and 216 apartment units. There will also be a section of the development um, to the south in the middle that will be for senior living. The applicants are proposing to phase this development in, in your packet as well as on the screen. You can see the phasing, um, the proposed phasing for the development. Mm -hmm. The options tonight are to approve or to approve the rezoning for the PUD to be um, B1, R6, R10, as proposed by the applicant's map, um, and amend the Siler City Land Development Plan to accommodate mixed use, or deny the request um, as not consistent with the area um, in the Siler City Land Use Development Plan. That's that presentation. I do believe we have several people in the audience tonight, um, as well as the applicants that signed up this time. Mm -hmm. uh, the applicant will go out and do his presentation directly after Jennifer. He's not part of the public. I mean, he doesn't have to sign up to speak. He doesn't have to agree with us. Will that be after? Right after Jennifer. Yes, yeah, so now I think Jennifer's done. Are there any questions with staff? Staff have a recommendation. I just didn't see any. Staff did not make a recommendation, but the planning board did make a recommendation for the map. All right. Well, on to the hearing parts. Uh, what we'll have is the one we have. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Where's that? There you are. Bob Dustin. Yeah, it is, it is. Thank you for the opportunity, Mayor. My name is Bob Dustin, and as uh, you mentioned, I'm the member. Uh, I represent the applicant. I'm just here basically to, to introduce the line which we have here. First, we're going to have Jim Ashton. He's going to speak. He did the civil design layout. For the project itself, Brad Andrew and his daughter Angela, Brad and the owner of the property, the developer, and then Will Ward is a summit engineering employee who we talked basic uh, civil engineering aspects of that specifically, and then finished up with Ben Vaughn, who has worked with the Brad Kinden over many projects and will oversee both the design and construction of the facility. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I am the lead designer for the project so far. Hold on, hold on. Just give you his name and address, like your buddy. Yes, sir. And give you on the screen. Sorry. From um, um, you can see here in the existing conditions map that the site has been partially timbered for maintenance. 
uh, clearing. Uh, the client did um, tender the property to get rid of the dead trees and these trees and the open the side up a little bit. Um, with the understanding that 50 foot to 100 foot around the perimeter was to be maintained for additional buffering. And then uh, with respect to the streams and wetlands as well, uh, we were left untouched uh, for the uh, environmental purposes. Um, and you've seen this briefly a moment ago from Jennifer. And I will walk you through this. We are here basically for a rezoning request. And we do understand that we have to present a conceptual site plan. So this is conceptual in nature. Um, it is by no means uh, a finished product. Um, but we are going with, from an a, we're looking to go from the AR to the PUD with uh, B1, R6, and R10. In the beginning of the process, we are looking at the orange you'll see there is light commercial um, with restaurants, um, with your nail salons, barber shops, things like that, um, convenience stores, um, with apartments above. And then as you move into the site further, you're going to the purple area, which represents the town hall communities. And then from there, you will go to the middle section where you'll see our senior citizen center, which will house approximately 300 beds. Um, and then there also will be an amenity site there with a detention pond that we will transform back into, at the end of the project, into an amenity in itself. And then beside of that, senior citizen center, we will also have um, two um, community centers, if you will, that can, that can be functioned for the senior citizen living as well as for the rest of the development and the surrounding communities. So it's not going to be just inclusive to this development, it is going to be open to the general public around it as well. And as you move through the site, you'll go into the back part of the property, which is the final phasing of this, and that will be your single family lots. Um, with the you know the, the typical um, zoning requirements, and then there's going to be a half acre lots which are shaded uh, shade in the green area. Now this development is um, geared towards a multi generational development, meaning that you know you come here, you can grow up here, you have children here to grow up, live in the community, they prosper or prosper in the community, and then they also will retire in the community itself in the senior citizen setting. And you also notice that the red dash lines towards the back of the property represent approximately 21,000 linear foot of uh, trail systems, which will link back to the sidewalks for the town homes that will link back to the commercial. And all of this will be accessible from all of the surrounding communities, not just the development. The goal of this development here is to, is to, is to enhance the community, but also to bring the community into this area as well with the parks, we're given back actually by code. I believe we're required to have, um, I want to say like uh, 6.76 acres of mini parks, if you will. But we're actually given back so far a little over 11 acres. And that was represented in the tan areas towards the back of the property and centralized in the center of the plant. We will be treating all on site runoff water on site. It will be treated on site by these pond systems. It will not leach into the streams. The streams will be protected. There will be no effects downstream at all. We are bound by codes and laws to protect the streams at all costs. And that will be the pond representation here. And most potential ponds in most developments, they are their ugly side of many, or not amenities, but their side um, devices, if you will, that are required. So they're usually tucked in the back of the properties. And surrounded by no fence and neglect it basically. They just serve a purpose, a tool, if you will, to collect stormwater runoff. But we are actually, as a company, looking at bringing those devices out of the darkness and into the light and turning them back into a big size. Whether they've got overlooks attached to them, whether they've got gazebos for, for outdoor wedding lectures or, or what have you, um, and just a place to enjoy with the family. And the larger parks in the center will be the largest of the two of the four parks, excuse me. And they will house things like pop up farmers markets. The, um, they'll have golf parks, could be a petting zoo, you know, things like that. Um, just a place for you to come out with your families, your children, your pets, and then uh, enjoy nature. And then we're also looking at the trail system as being like an educational part to the park. So the, so the children can come here and learn about the different ecosystems within the development. 
around the streams, the ponds, and so forth. And we are protecting, like Jennifer said, we're we're bound by UDO to protect at least a minimum of 10 foot around the property. We actually had a uh, community meeting on Thursday through Zoom and we talked to some of the residents. And we are uh, we are listening to what the residents have to say. If they want, you know, we're opening it up to the porch, if they want to see things, elements of the parks, additional buffers, we are listening to that. And we're here to answer any questions that anybody has tonight regarding any element of this development or any concerns that anyone has. But we are actually giving back to the site, even though it's been timbered for management, once the development is done, and we're looking at a 10 plus year process here, we're not looking at overnight, but once this development is processed and completely developed, whatever land is left over, we are going back and reforesting the areas that need to be buffed up for additional buffers. Because our, our client is very environmental sensitive person, and he actually is looking to move into this community. But this development will also bring a lot of jobs to Silo City, uh, especially within this cluster community, and allow the site to give back to the community as well. And that is our goal. We don't develop sites and, and expect them just to be confined to that area only. We actually open it up to the general population. So the parks will be open, the trail will be open. Of course, all the commercial site will be open. This is going to be geared towards the pedestrian friendly movement throughout the site. Does anyone have any questions for me before I pass up here? I do. Um, if you wait for the pump station, mm -hmm. are you just going to have one or are you going to have several? Is there a change in phase in these different places? That's a question I'm going to defer to Will. He'll speak about uh, first hand on the uh, civil aspect of the project. Right. But then I do know that this project will only develop as the infrastructure is improved. It's not going to be boom, we're coming in doing the whole bunch of at the same time. No. It's going to be phased as the infrastructure is built up to accommodate this. We know that, you know, currently the infrastructure is, doesn't have capacity. Right. But as growth happens, then the development itself will grow along with that. Okay. But you'll be able to speak more with the technical aspect. Okay. So, and so uh, there's initially one entrance and uh, an, an exit out of the property. And then, do I understand that you're going to have one directly to 421? Yes, sir. We are currently we have secured the one entrance there. With that's why the phasing happens. Which one did you secure? I'm sorry. The one off Blossom is the one that we're looking at our primary right now. Okay. And the, the crossing for the railroad is still in negotiations. Our client is uh, talking to the Southern Railroad about that crossing. And we also understand that unless we have two entrances, we're in this phasing plan, there we only have 70, 77 uh, townhomes that will be built because you have to have uh, no more than 100 for just one entrance. Mm -hmm. So in order to, to completely finish the development, we will have to secure a second entrance. Sure. We're, and this goes to what you said, that entrance that you're going to have right there on Lawson Road. Lawson Road is not that big road, and it's, it's going to come out right there in the curve, I think, in that approximately right. Right. Yeah. Are you, is there any plans to upgrade that section of Lawson Road? Because I go through there a lot, and you know, it's just, it's just, it's just on the city road. Yes. yes, sir. Yeah, we, we do have plans to improve that as well. And I know it was a stoplight before. But this gentleman here, Ed, um, that has done our, has done our uh, TIA for this project, and he can speak to you more about that. Uh, okay. And then that same thing is your streets wide enough to accommodate meet, meet the town standards? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, everything that you see on this map has been taken from the UDO. Okay. For all San Francisco. And uh, since Commissioner Brown asked that, that made me think, huh? That once, you know, I know it's going to be in phase, but once, you know, you get the roads built and everything, they're going to build the town standards. Uh, who are you going to try to turn them over to the town or going to keep the maintenance up on snow removal, that kind of thing? We currently have them listed as public waterways. So there will be yes. The state maintained though. Uh, is it? Yeah, I believe that's the way we have. Well, so the that's how we kind of went into the state and those. Yeah, I can never speak to that as well. But we currently have them listed as 
it's public roads, at least the spine road, not the uh, not the off roads. The roads going into the town are private. Okay. So the main thing might go away. Okay. The main road would be public. Yes, sir. And as far as the, the open space requirements for South um, we were well, we were bound by um, I believe it was five percent of the total lot. Currently, we're giving we're showing as it stands today, even with the timbering that's happened, we're still showing an excess of sixty-seven acres of natural green space. And that <laughs> does include the buffer and that one. <laughs> and then the the lighter green, if you will, the lighter green. It's kind of hard to see from the distance. Is just general open space, open green space that we're giving in addition to that. And like I was saying before, once once the plan has went through the process of rezoning, and we start getting into construction drawings and looking at fine grading, we may find out that some of these lots won't work. But right now, we're currently just showing this is the representation of what is allowed by the current EDA for each one of the zones. And then once we get into fine grade, we may see that some of these lots don't work, and then that, that area will be given back as natural space and reforest. Okay. Other questions from the Okay. Well, I do thank you for your time. I'm going to turn it over to Matthew. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, yeah. respected uh, councilman, councilwoman, and then uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Rad Handel. I lead the group of the developers of this project. Um, the technical uh, technical uh, details uh, we have technical team here, uh, like uh, Jim said, and uh, we did the North Carolina Department of uh, Calculation uh, uh, TIA study, carbon impact study that uh, does the uh, study to show what needs to be done, what kind of improvement needs to be done at a certain level of the improvement so that uh, our engineer Ed can speak to on, on that behalf. And then, but uh, I just want to give a little bit of a presentation about not a presentation, I just want to talk about the what we're trying to do here. This might look like a oh, it's a mega project, massive project, at least in the city main side. And this might look like oh, there are a lot of homes. Yes, of course, there will be a lot of homes. But behind what you see here is, is we are trying to create a community that works in harmony with the nature, in harmony with the people that, that live in the community. Uh, my vision is to create a community that I can be proud of. That that you know I I led the uh, project to to develop, uh, which is safe for everyone to be a member of, where I can live alongside my neighbors. If I'm not, if I did something shortcoming, then people that are that are living there are not going to be happy with me. So I'm taking that risk. It's not even a risk. It, it's, it's a challenge that I mean, I'm, I'm going to take. I'll be living in the community. And uh, uh, so that's that's how confident I am that uh, this is not only we're not thinking, looking at making money, quickly do something and run away. This is going to be a long term project. So you will see me as a resident here, as, as, a, as, your, as your neighbor here for, for a long time, long time to come. Um, a little background about myself uh, I was born and grew up in uh, remote mountains in Nepal. I came here about 30 years ago to go to college. Uh, after after the uh, college, I joined at IBM as a system engineer. I worked there for about five years, and then I started doing business. Uh, I've done a lot of retails, restaurants, gas stations, uh, stock business, uh, apartments. Um, but I wanted to create a, a project that that, that I could be uh, that, that, that could be a signature product, and this is what you know we, 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 we want to make it here. Um, so I've been you know traveling all over the places, and I look at these other communities and what they have done, 
uh, and uh, it's very hard to see a community where you are able to find the things that you look for in the community, like uh, um, Jim talked about the uh, walking trails, right? When, when you get out of your home, you can actually access the walking trail, you can walk all morning long. Uh, the parks, I know there are parks in the community, uh, but they're not abundant, they're not walking, right? You, you, you gotta drive to go, to go over here. Uh, the uh, retail, commercial retail, we're not talking about big box stores, we're not talking about home people, we're not talking about loans, we're talking about small grocery store, your uh, restaurants, a hair salon, something that you would, go, you, you, would, you would be able to walk from your home and go get a haircut, come home and take out. Those kind of things we're talking about. So the mixed use development that we're talking about, we're gonna have those uh, mom and pop retail stores on the first floor, then you have your insurance offices, insurance agent office, or a real estate agent office on the second floor, and then apartment on the third floor. That's the kind of retail we're talking about, which is very lively. Uh, you can walk morning, day, evenings, um, uh, uh, any, any time of the day, and then you don't need to drive. That's not, you don't necessarily need to drive. But does that mean you don't need to drive at all? Yeah, of course. And you got to are going to home people, you got to go outside of town to go to home people. Our goal over here is to, play, uh, to support these small local businesses and create a walkable community. Um, it's accessible uh, by walking. Uh, it's going to be, a, as I said, a mission property. Um, and uh, you can also have uh, urgent care offices, small dental offices uh, in, in those uh, second, uh, second, uh, second story. Um, it's a, uh, and then also create a welcome. A social environment for the Salish community. Uh, you know, as uh, Jim talked about, the, on that, uh, the bigger uh, pond that you see in the, in the middle with the green, green, green park area around, uh, you know, we plan to uh, do a, a small um, farmer's market. Very hard to see uh, you know, these kind of things incorporated in a, uh, in a development area because all these big, big companies are looking for a crop, and there's nothing wrong with that. But here, obviously, you know, this is going to be a profitable uh, venture. But we are not gearing towards profit. We are gearing towards how do we create a, a unique community which serves all the purposes for, for people living in the community and then people living around the community. So, farmer market. Uh, and then we are also looking at doing um, your uh, uh, small pigeons where we can bring animals from. Other places where you know, animals are you know, straight on animals, dogs, cats, and then you know, give them home. Uh, you know, um, just to let you know that I stopped eating meat and dairy about eight years ago because I care about environment, and I'm living living perfectly fine. Thank God, uh, I'm happy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm healthy than than before. Um, so uh, you know, we, we want to create a, a community where. The community is intended to uh, be. Um, are we going to be 100 percent successful? I don't know. But if you don't plan something, you're never going to get. If you don't execute something, it's, it's never going to happen. Um, we'll also have a, a community center where you can have a gym, gym swimming pool, a gathering hall, and a community kitchen. Right? If you want to throw a birthday party. You don't need to go to a McDonald's or a Burger King or some big fancy place to do a party park. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing that, but if you have a community kitchen, it will be nice to get together, make food, and then enjoy after afterwards. That's the kind of community that we want to create. Um, and again, you know, we're not coming up with the same you know, with, with the thousand townhomes and say, hey, this is what my project is, uh, you take it or leave it. Or uh, we're not coming here with a, a private town, you know, a single time loan sign, and this is what we need to have. We are open to any kind of suggestion from the community. That's why we did a community meeting before coming to this, uh, this council uh, uh, last week. And we had six or seven community members going to join our uh, online meeting, and we had a very fantastic um, uh, discussion. And we were able to answer uh, questions from the community. So this is the question. 
Uh, this is a rezoning application, rezoning process. Uh, and uh, we are willing to work with the community uh, to do whatever it takes, as long as it makes sense, uh, to work with the community and uh, come up with a, uh, a good uh, a, a development, a good community that uh, we can be all can Thank you very much. Well, I have a couple of questions now to listen to what you said. I think you have a very nice plan here, like what you said. Um, and I'm sure you're aware of um, our community that we're in now is rather diverse. And uh, with that said, there's a lot of large range in uh, uh, household income. And one of the things that uh, we're probably short on here as far as housing goes is uh, lack of a better term workforce housing. You know, we've got a lot of things going on. I was just curious, just, and I know it's somewhere out there in the future, and it's going to be a best guess, but what kind of uh, price range will generally speaking? Will this community generate? I mean, I, I know it is building costs are skyrocketing and all that, but sort of what's your budget or what's your figure that you choose? Absolutely, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much for a uh, uh, very important question. Um, that's exactly why we want to create, we want to do what we want to do. Those townhouses you see, those are 1,200 to 1,500 square feet townhouses. If somebody wants to make bigger, I mean, we, we, we all, this is a market economy, you, you have to you know, uh, listen to the uh, to, to your customers. But what we want to do is we want to create a, an entry level homes which are affordable because they are smaller in size. They may not have all the bells and whistles, but they will be uh, sustainable because we're going to implement a solar panel in all of our homes so that your energy cost is nearly zero. Uh, we can't guarantee because you can't control the nature. Sometimes you get some, sometimes you don't. But we're going to implement uh, the, uh, and then we are also going to do um, uh, smart um, appliances. So that's going to also help create, uh, help lower the cost of utility. So will our going in cost will be low? So to answer the question, um, the way the inflation is going, it's very hard for me to sit here and say, this is how much is the house is going to be. But, but my idea is lower $200,000 to start for an entry-level townhouse. But then when you go to single-family homes, it all depends on what size you want to build. And it will be, but I don't foresee any house with there being right now in the trade economy. Five, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars. These are going to be a uh, variety of. That's why you have apartments. Where a daughter, my my daughter, she's, she's uh, just finished. She just graduated from uh, University of Iowa, and she's going to go in law school. So when she is about to, it's some somebody like her who come in rent an apartment, and then eventually in, in a couple of years, buy a, a, a townhouses, and then also in a, in a few years go into a, a bigger one. So it will be a multi-generational uh, community, and this is exactly what we want to do. That's why we're going to have apartments so people can rent, and then townhouses, uh, interior townhouses, and then obviously single family units. Okay. Thank you. That was, that was good. Thank you. Any other questions? You mentioned that that it would be open to the citizens inside our city. But what restrictions will there be for citizens who may want to come in there? Uh, I don't think there will be any restrictions, and just like in other uh, in other uh, uh, communities you see around, um, it, it, it's open to every the business. It's open to anyone, every the community center. Uh, you know, obviously, it will be first come first serve. Uh, if it's if it's already booked, you can really use it. But if it's not booked, somebody wants to do a, a birthday party, or somebody wants to come in and use the library. It's going to be open to public. This is not an exclusive, a uh, hidden, or uh, something uh, inside, uh, you know, a, a, a curtain. And this is going to be uh, just like any other community you see. And then, I mean, we, my daughter and I, we just enjoyed the coffee at the coffee shop in downtown today, just like that. It's going to be you know, wide open to public for anyone to use it. Obviously, it's a community. 
So it may not, I mean, it, it may not, maybe if you finish the swimming pool on the, uh, you could have a swimming pool on the community center. If somebody wants to swim at 11 p.m. at night, no, you can't. We get that we have the inside everything. But if it is open to the uh, public, it's open to the public. So I don't see any, any restrictions in the pool, but put in place. He also mentioned something about senior living. Yes, ma'am. What so, does that consist of? Okay, so it's going to be a, uh, so there is a, a we are um, uh, proposing a um, senior uh, care center. So basically, once I'm not able to cook or uh, take care of myself in my single hand room, then I would like to go to a place where a uh, nurse can take care of me, the nurse can you know, uh, give me a medicine and remind me when to take the medicine. And then there is a food that for me to you know walk uh, or into come in a wheelchair and I can you know build down myself or if, if I need help, somebody can come in and you know bring me food. That's I mean just like a regular nursing. Uh, so we're proposing about 300 um, bed nursing uh, for a different kind of um, state. Uh, but that that's I you know I think that's gonna be about eight, ten years down the road for us. That's that's our last um, step on the on our journey. Is this going to be a gated community? It's not. Security. No, it's a while. Security, I mean, you know, I believe in silencing in the state community and you know, we do everything possible to keep it safer. And otherwise, you know, and, you know we rely on the, you know, the city to, 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 you know, to make the community safe. But that we uh, you know, I don't foresee a, a great community. We kind of thought about it before, but then we step away from you know, having a gated community. Uh, so we, you know, we, we want to make this a uh, open community that anyone you know, can come in and be, be part of. I'm going to ask you a question that I get asked I don't know how many times a week. You have any food with Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I saw the reason I asked, I saw the retail space on there. I get asked that at least two or three times every week. When we get to Starbucks. Yeah, you know, we can develop, you know, quick enough, yes, Starbucks. I mean, you know, I, I currently want about 10, 12 different franchises. Yeah, well, I did a little bit. So, absolutely, yeah. I mean, if there is a demand, obviously, you know, we can always provide that, provide services. <laughs> Other questions for the board? Thank you very much for that presentation. My name is William Work. I'm a summit design engineer. I'm the engineer that has done some of the preliminary analysis of the engineering components on the site. Um, I'll talk to you quickly about a few of them stormwater, wetland, and buffer. Preservation, erosion control, their construction, utilities, and a little bit about traffic. So, starting with stormwater, you can see on the map there and in your packets the blue ponds that are scattered across the site are strategically located at um, existing low points as well as an anticipated low points that we determined through some, some preliminary grading. Basically, you have a site right now that has a certain cover condition, uh, woods, uh, field. Uh, it has a certain runoff rate at the edge of the property where runoff is measured. Once you build out the subdivision, those cover conditions change and runoff increase. And the ponds are located to intercept that runoff, retain it, and control the release of that water slowly um, through engineered uh, stormwater outlets in those ponds. Um, wetlands and buffers, or excuse me, wetlands and streams have been located on the property already through the process that um, is regulated by the Corps, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, and the NCDEQ. They have all been preserved in buffers on this plan, and they will be protected um, during construction and in perpetuity um, throughout the development's lifetime. Any impact to those um, buffers or streams, like crossings, of which there are a few, will be permitted through the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality 
than the United States Army Corps of Engineers. Um, during construction, we'll, we'll implement erosion control devices. A few of the important ones are uh, super silk fence across the perimeter to protect uh, surface runoff, uh, as well as temporary sediment basins in the same footprints where those ponds are located so that flooding during construction is retained uh, before the subdivision is finished. And that'll reduce some of your uh, orange water you see flowing off site and into streams during that process. All of those structures, all the erosion control design and sequencing will be control, uh, will be designed uh, by the regulations that are currently in place by Chatham County um, and design standards given to us by the state in their erosion control manual. Utilities were brought up. Uh, currently, we're showing your packets uh, pump station right now in, in preliminary analysis. Um, we've determined that that uh, is one of the ones needed to get the first few phases through construction. Um, as mentioned by Jimmy, uh, the project is phased such that the utility load on the, on the city system will be gradual and will not overwhelm uh, the wastewater treatment facilities. Right now, that's the only one, that pump station is the only one that's planned on site. And um, more, more analysis will be done to locate, uh, to locate others. As far as traffic goes, we have completed a traffic uh, traffic impact analysis that has been reviewed by the DOT and Silo City um, and has recommended several road improvements at the entrances as well as um, at a few off-site locations. And the developer is committed to making all of those improvements as phasing dictates and construction of this project. Also of note is the railroad crossing. So we have been in conversation with the DOT rail, with the DOT um, and others regarding the process for obtaining a railroad crossing. And the developer is committed to continuing that conversation and finding a uh, solution to achieve the crossing. And if not, we'll look for other potential um, solutions. So, with that, are there any questions for me? Yes. Uh, I was asking you about the sewer pump station. Yes. You're going to have one main station. And as these other phases come in, are you going to try to gravity to that, or are you going to have to have satellite pump station? That would be ideal to be able to gravity. It's a big site. Um, a lot of the earthwork could uh, bounce such that the sewer could gravity to that pump station. However, as we go into design, as it's phased design, we will um, sketch out a development schedule and the load that, that pump station inherits throughout those years. And if more of it necessary, we will locate them uh, as those phases are permitted to construct and Okay. Well, you're on the pump station once it's built, completed, and inserted. You will, who will who will operate it and keep the maintenance up and all that? Uh, that has not been determined at this time, but it will be a it will be a conversation going into design and will be determined before it's fully permitted and put into use in the first phase. <coughs> Just but as I'm sure it's probably a part of the conversation and uh probably more facility than we have been. I'm assuming by the the uh entrances or the drives across the there will be gated lighted. Yeah. Okay. Assuming since this is in the ETJ is, is the expectation that this that this site plan would be uh the uh, apply for voluntary annexation? Um, yes, that is the plan of okay. right now. Oh, 
about, about the about the infrastructure, but um, is is water and sewer already out that along Lawson Road or not? Um, no, no. <laughs> so there has to be a, water has to be extended down um, from the other side of uh, 421, <laughs> and we have in the tactics on the um, preliminary site plan, we have a sewer outfall to the um, current sewer manhole mm -hmm. up 421, which is plan north on that. On that. How, how far does water need to be extended? Mm -hmm. I can't that's all the problem ahead. It's clear sure. Mm -hmm. I can pull it in. So currently water stopped at Autumn Drive, and the county picks it up from there. So they could have been county water or state water. That's the conversation we have. Okay. Can I ask a question? All right. Thank you very much for that. I'm not sure you guys are ready to move on. You know, but uh, I just want my name is Josh Bullard. I own Bell Construction and Transcend Procurement Group. My main purpose tonight was to talk honestly about Rad a little bit and my experience with them. I've been my own company for 12 years. We've done project well throughout the United States and I've worked on with multiple developers. I met Rad about seven years ago on a small project in Chicago. And we did that project for him. It was a hotel renovation. And through that process, he had multiple options multiple times to do this type of project or this type of project. And every time he chose to do the option that best served the guests that were going to come to that hotel, no matter what the financial impact was. So at that point, we started to build a relationship, like to see who he was, not just as a developer, but as a person. And we'll fast forward a little bit. There was a project that he had he purchased a hotel down in Tulsa, Louisiana. And we had visited it because we were going to do another renovation for that hotel. And at that point, I think we were about 60 days away from starting that renovation, and Hurricane Ida hit help. And it completely devastated that hotel. So Terrible in the parish wouldn't allow anybody into that area for like five days. So on the fifth day, I showed up down there. Brad showed up down there. I flew in, he drove in, and what he had with him was a trailer. And behind it, he brought in water, he brought in food, he brought in generators. It wasn't the hotel that he was worried about, it was all the staff and all the people out there. Despite the hotel being a total loss. And it took a year, year and four months to put it back together. That's who he is. <laughs> so when he talks about this development and the fact that he's going to live here, then I think that's a huge testament in my eyes to who he is. And I guess he's, you know, when he bought the land, he called me up, told me the vision. We came here, we visited, walked the site to the point where I've got a wife, three little ones, they're here, they're in a hotel room. And he talks about when this goes through him living here, we're going to be here with him for 10 years. We're going to be here. So not only is this a professional investment for us, but it's a personal investment for us. Because I do believe in this project. I do believe in this great cyber city. And I hope you guys have seen that between Summit, what Brad has said, and I think you're going to hear from the community, community members as well. So that's really all I have. I just want to let you guys know from a personal standpoint, we make decisions based on that, but you also based on the person that you're looking at. I think you guys are looking at. Any questions? Um, good evening. My name is Angela Mandit. I am the daughter of the developer, Rad Candy here. Um, obviously, you know, as a daughter, I will hardly support um, whatever projects and developments he's doing. But I kind of want to talk about this project in a more independent manner, away from being his daughter, but as someone um, coming in. I recently graduated college, actually, just two days ago. Um, but 
I really do believe in this project and I wanted to come in from Iowa today uh, to kind of talk about how I see this project being not only a positive impact to Tyler City, but also people from uh, my generation. Uh, so I think one of the biggest things that I've seen over the last few years, um, seeing my dad work on this project, is his main goals, um, working on the environment, making sure it's environmentally friendly, having a place uh, not only for you know an older generation to live in, but an intergenerational uh, facility where you can have young adults like me uh, starting off their careers, um, living in apartments and townhomes, uh, kind of progressing on to starting their own families. Um, owning a single home, family home, and then having you know your grandparents and your parents in the community, um, all having a welcoming community for everyone to grow up in and spend time in, uh, while also enjoying the natural environment and the beautiful weather here in North Carolina. Um, I think it's really fundamental and a really unique idea uh, that's coming in, having a place where the community can come together. Um, use the different aquatic facilities, the community centers, um, having the walkable trails, having farmers markets. I think it's something that my generation is starting to find the value in um, as we want to uh, kind of move into having more walkable areas, um, supporting small businesses and things like that. Um, and again, the huge emphasis on generational livability. Um, I think it's a, a unique idea and a great, um, a great way to grow up with the different generations of your family together and having everybody close by. Um, I go to school in Iowa, like I said, I just graduated from the university and I plan on going to law school here. But after that, I do plan to practice law here in North Carolina. And being able to have a development in a place like this would allow me to be near my parents, to practice what I want to do, uh, to raise my family here and to help develop the economy here in South City as a whole. Um, and I think a facility and a development like this can really, truly um, improve not only the community, uh, but bring in, um, you know, a fresh base of ideas, uh, a new generation of people, and help the community. Thank you. Any questions for the board? No. Oh, excuse me, board. Just a thought. Um, <laughs> Um, you just graduated, and that um, uh, you want to start your career. So, say for instance, and, and this is, I guess, to be for England, um, we have teachers who are starting out, and if they're looking for an apartment to live in, their starting salary is just thirty-seven thousand dollars a year. Can they afford an apartment? Um, you know, I can't speak uh, per se on the technicalities of the price of the apartments and things like that, but I do think a lot of that comes in um, with the future development of the city and of the, of the state, um, you know, different laws and trying to progress that there. But if there is an opportunity to create an environment where um, there are places accessible for, you know, teachers, um, community, community members to stay, um, I think if that's an opportunity, you know. One, one of the other ones. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other presenters? No group. Am I, am I allowed to make a comment? Uh, I think there's somebody that yeah. needs to bring a yeah. microphone. That's you, the bar presenters, who don't have questions. Could you sign up to speak? Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to have to read brief. Yeah, it's, it's, there's several folks that are signed up to speak. Are you speaking on this? Yeah, he is right.
on this different topics that I mean that I just want to answer your question that I'm sure you my daughter. So uh, again, you don't know how much the rent is gonna be because it, you know, there are a lot of factors in play, but the idea of uh, making a mixed team development. So having the retail on the first floor, having offices on the second floor, and then apartment up above is to lower the cost down of the development rather than having one big building with the, the all and nothing but apartments. And then the idea is people who be working in the coffee shop or people working at the grocery store can have a chance to live upstairs so that they're not polluting the environment by driving car, they're not you know, creating traffic congestion by by you know commuting 50 miles, 20, 20 miles or away from their home. That is the uh, that, that is that is the trend that's going nationwide because you can't really build road overnight. So you want to contain the community, not by force, by creating amenities. So that's the whole idea about mixing community so that you can have somebody working in a non shop or restaurant and take care, hopefully, not the home for the end. So that's the whole idea. All right. We have several people who signed up to speak. Here in sort of round rooms, each person will have three minutes to uh, speak. Uh, and it's now important to keep a uh, record of the time. And when you hear her speak, I mean, what, what's the signal? Time. Get... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she'll give, she give you a little bit of more, 30 seconds or so the board's over, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So you can finish up. And when you come to the podium, you would state your name and address so we can record that for the record. Uh, the first person to sign it, uh, John Nash. He's coming. I will say, if there's a hand, I'd like to do this a little once you know, so you're more than welcome to go ahead. Yeah. If you want to go first, he's going to let you do what he's not really that good. I didn't know how many will speak. Well, there's a whole page. Go on. I can be last. Is it right? Let's go with Twitter. That's going for you. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, my name is John Nash, 1809 Great Oaks Drive in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I run a small business called Caliber Lands. Uh, we're a brokerage firm that focuses on raw land sales, raw land being timberland, agricultural land, land that is not developed. Um, I had no skin in this game whatsoever in terms of this project. I did not have a buyer or a seller, uh, but I have worked with Brad Bandit in the past. Um, I've known Brad for a few years now uh, and helped him in other parts of North Carolina with some development. Um, in my business, uh, I do get asked by developers on occasion to speak on their behalf. Uh, I find a lot of benefit to me in that uh, because I'm just a broker. But 99% uh, of the time, I'll politely decline. Um, Brad did reach out to me, um, and I was more than happy to come to Solid City and, and say just a few words on, on Brad and his character. Um, as I said, I've worked with a, a lot of developers that work on these, what I call fringe developments, outside of towns uh, that we need to be annexed in. Uh, but these are the guys that have a vision when you look at a span of trees and you see opportunity there. Um, it's hard to break into that market, especially if you're not from this area. Um, but I do want to stick my neck out a little bit on behalf of Brad. Um, Brad, as I said, I've worked with him for a couple of years now. Um, he's an extremely fair individual. Um, he's one that is methodical in his developments, and he's one that listens. Um, he's willing to bend in order to create a component development here. Uh, I've seen him do it in other places. Um, the guy has not only an incredible story, but he does have an incredible work, that, work ethic. Uh, and he's intimately involved in the project. This is not one of 100 projects that he's got going on right now today. Uh, he calls me weekly, and I'm literally not even involved in this project. Um, I did help with the land management side and timber harvesting, of which I'm happy to answer any questions as to what remains out there and what you will be planted back. Uh, I hope to help him in that process. Uh, but when Brad came to me uh, initially, uh, he asked me to oversee the timber harvest of that track. 
Um, I've never seen a developer keep more than 100 feet of buffer on his property line. There's a lot of value in those trees. If you just 20 seconds. Okay. Uh, and then we also left all the hardwoods. The hardwoods are bringing in wildlife. That was an important part of them. Pine trees don't really bring any wildlife. I will end by saying that Siler City's motto is balance for progress. It's a balanced project. This is an incredible opportunity with a man who's going to be intimately involved. Um. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, Dwight Thurzen. Uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, I'm really from the Moore County, but the reason I wanted to come here today is just sort of bring y'all up a little bit. Red. If you would state your name and address. Please. Oh, okay. yeah, have a my name is Dwight Hudson from Robbins, North Carolina. And uh, the reason I'm here is this sort of bring you up on the kind of person he is. I leased the property in 2007 and then it changed hands to the grandfather. <laughs> and I've, I've known him a short period of time. But he's always had the time for me, you know, to talk to me. And he cared enough that I enjoyed the land. After he bought it, he continued to let me do it the same way. And you don't find many people uh, that's got that much time for you. you know, I'm just a farmer. I raise baby cattle, and I spend a lot of time inside the city parks. <laughs> the whole nine yards. But I really like what Brad is trying to do here because he, he's looking after not just a few people, the community. And he's believing a lot of the natural that Silver City has always been noted for its country. And you know, my parents love, I love, I spend probably more time here. Then I do it more. Yeah. But anyway, Rad sees that, and it uh, he, it looks like he is planning to have something not for just a few people, but for a lot of people to enjoy. And I really firsthand know that property as good as I do before. And I've been on it, like I said, ever since 2007, and Johnny there has farmed it. But the property can really, it can really improve Silo City and its sales because what he's going to do with it, it's uh, even back in the olden time when Mr. Hancock had it, they was talking about a rock where it was interested in it at the time. And it was something like making the gravel stone. Robert Hancock, man, he told me all about it. But anyway, it fell through. But something like, 20 seconds. It's a little excuse me. But it, it's a wonderful project for all of Silo City. And just like you pointed out, with the teachers, and we need more teachers. I hope my grandchild is going to be one. But anyway, it's a good class for the adjoining more Randolph. Um, <laughs> excuse me. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Mr. Next up, Ray, you're on here, do you? Okay. Uh, please, Dennis Brown. Are you doing this? Uh, Jim Ashley. This is going real well. Well, now this is going to be interesting. Bob. Yeah, Bob K. We'll go to leave it at that. Can I hear you? Mr. Craig, your name and address. You want to know that? <laughs> uh, Johnny, here you're 24 in book. I could show a copy. Uh, I've known Ray about three years. <clears throat> he spent a lot of time where I looked at the community before we started all this. He marked all the trails, all the waterways. Believe what he said and what he's going to do. 
I believe you'd be a good asset, Sock. He's doing good to me. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Harris. Uh, I'm Scott Harris, 61 Carvington Road, Sanford, North Carolina. Uh, I'm a business owner and real estate broker here in Cyber City. Uh, work with Rad off and on me for a year, maybe two years, I forget the, the exact. Uh, <clears throat> through the whole time, Rad has been the most professional, uh, one of the most professional people I've worked with. He's, he's done everything he said he's going to do. Work with a lot of developers that want to tie up a piece of real estate. They want to go for six months and then say, hey, see if we can stretch it out another six months. Brad didn't do that. He, he believes in investing here in Cyber City. He purchased the property and then went over his plans. Uh, as you all know, here in Cyber City, for many years, young kids, go to school here, graduate high school, go to college. They can't come back here because there's no jobs for them. Wolf Speed, a bunch of other companies come into town, they're gonna change that. What Brad is proposing is to have this multi-generational community where all these solid speed folks can have the generation of the family stay right here. So uh, I'm all for the plan and uh, recommend that it's still approved. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Next up, Mr. Jack Summers. Just you state your name and address, please. Jack Summers, Chief. 3131 Sylvan Avenue, Charlotte. And, um, no, he's the key guy for the long case. All right. Thank you. Okay. Edgar. Okay, that works. <laughs> yeah. Pass your name again. I'll butcher you. Edward Sergani. Sergani, yeah. 320 Executive Court, Hillsboro. Uh, I'm with Brad and the development team. Um, I signed up mostly during the question. Uh, I was responsible for the traffic analysis that was done. So uh, I'm against the phone. Is there any questions for that? So I'm going to list. So that's all I was going to say for, for now. Mm -hmm. William. Did we? We asked me. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Rosa for sale. Can you give your name and address, please? Good evening. I'm Dr. Rosa for sale, 3208 Olive Moose Road in Greensboro, North Carolina. I am here in support of this project. Why am I in support of it? It joins my property. So it's good to see that someone has an interest in enhancing the development of that area. I grew up on on Lawson Road, so I know it very well from 421 to Benning Highway. Um, that has always been an area that I enjoy. And to see progress coming forth uh, for the city, I think it's going to be wonderful. As long as they, and I feel sure that this will help to enhance what's taking place and what they're talking about, <laughs> it's pretty much what I think will help bring progress to our little area, Lawson Road. So I say, I think this is, will be an excellent way of enhancing progress in Zala City. Thank because you. truly we need that multi generation here. Thank you very much. All right, Bernstein. 
Do I need to go over there and speak or speak from here? If, if, if you can, it would be better if better to so right. record it over there, please. Not quite as good as they used to be. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bernice Hancock, and uh, I was born and raised here in Salt City, lived here all my life. In fact, I've lived uh, for the last 40 years or so uh, right across the road from this proposed development. And, and the address uh, where you live now is what? The address. I'm sorry. The address. Oh, my, uh, my address. It's 264 Lawson Road. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first heard about the project, I was a little bit concerned and apprehensive. We've got a wonderful neighborhood out there. Got a lot of wildlife, deer, foxes, turkeys. It's just a peaceful area. And so naturally I was concerned. But the more I looked into it, the more I'm convinced that this is just what we need here in South City. I saw a while ago when they were going through the budget, one of the goals was to encourage housing development. And to me, this is just the type of housing development we need. I've talked to uh, Brad and a lot of his associates, and he's put together a, what I consider a real quality team and uh, I've got every confidence that they will do exactly what they'll see it. I've checked on some of their other, other projects, and I'm told that they've always, with those, uh, they have a good reputation. They do what they say and can depend on them. And uh, so I'd just like to ask y'all to look with favor on this application and do what you can to support the project. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. All right, that completes the comment part. Any questions from the board or anything? What's the next thing? You can, or you can leave it uh, open just while you deliberate in case you want to ask the thing another question or something. So you uh, leave it open to you. All right. What's we have any questions in discussion of the board? Any questions about like that? I mean, I, I'm not normally one to to veer from what the um, planning board usually recommends, but I'm, I'm interested. And in Tanner, maybe you can help answer what, what was what was the, the reasoning the planning board wanted to or they recommended not? Um, when the planning board deliberated, it did not take into Identify 
I'll make a motion that pursuant to North Carolina General Statute sections 160D 604 and 605, the board finds the proposed zoning map amendment in case R230501 is consistent with the town of Silo City's land development plan. The following analysis examines proposed amendment relative to the goals and land use policies and the adopted strategic plan is presented in our packet. The proposed zoning amendment is reasonable in the public interest because it supports the policies of the land development plan and the town's strategic plan uh, because of the, the items noted in our packet. All right, we have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion, questions or anything? Hearing none, we're good to vote. All those in favor of seeing them out saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, like sign. And the motion carries. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see. Do we need to do we need to, to do anything with this um amendment, this uh ordinance amending the zoning map? The mayor it after the okay, got it. I've got uh, we've been here for a little while. What do y'all think about taking about like a five minute reset? Yep. You know, do whatever you got to do. And, uh, and we'll meet back in here. I've got uh, 8 10. We'll be back in here about 8 15. Thank you. Very good. Mm -hmm. yeah.
And the residentially zoned properties would be um, the properties in the These are just a couple of pictures of the adjacent properties um, to the east. To the east is um, vacant properties, the vacant properties um, along Highway 64, as well as a little bit, you can see a little bit of farm stuff. <laughs> to the west is the vacant property, and across the street is also vacant. The options for tonight is our approval of the amendment to um, having highly commercial um, and the zoning is consistent um, with the land use, the Tyler City Land Development Plan. There will be no change to um, the land development plan if this item is approved or denial of the recommendation. That's that staff's presentation. The applicant is here tonight to speak in behalf of his application. Are there any questions of staff? Well, this and maybe this is maybe this comes in a later stage. I don't know. Uh, you know, one of the discussions that we've been having it's more it's down in the town of having interconnectivity, you know, without having so many driveways or access points. You know, on uh, 64 there. And I don't know if this enters into this or not because it's it's different, but is that being given any consider? I don't know what it wants to do. Correct. The applicant has not identified or presented a site plan that will be part of the site plan process that he might have to provide, he would provide stuff to different property or um for example, for the highway commercial property that's to the east of him, provides some kind of connectivity with them where there's a cross connection and they might have like a shared driveway because that property is undeveloped as well as this property. Yeah, and, and what I'm thinking is, you know, people going west, just come out of the city limits, just come over top of the hill. And they've mashed the accelerator to the floor and they're trying to get back up to speed. And, you know, it's just, a, just something. Right. Correct. Yeah. That was, that, like I said, that was coming into the site development process um, between in a discussion with our public streets as well as with DOT, since it is a DOT road. They would have to figure out the driveway permits and connection together. Thank you. Thank you. Rick, Mr. Summers, you speak now. I'm back. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. He didn't have to give his name or anything, but I'm not a speaker. He's a presenter. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, I've been involved with Solid City since 2019. I was a few months shopping center in July 2019. There were very big there. We actually have expansion plans for that location as well. Um, all of the bottom land, two different areas that are in high growth based on relationships. Currently, in my holdings, I have like the big white chicken, the wild leaves, buffalo wild leaves, Panera, Chipotle, Starbucks, <laughs> and, and people like that that I work with in other cities throughout the Southeast. So, as Jennifer said, I do not have current plans, but as the formula that these companies use based on traffic channels, population density, things like that, then they'll be ready to come. They're already looking to come in because they know that certain things are good and they want to be So I'm just preparing to be So I purchased the land and we're asking for. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions from anybody else? 
Pretty straightforward. Straightforward. Well, I'll make a motion pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 160, Section 160D 604 and 605. The board finds the proposed zoning map amendment in case R23 0501 is consistent with the town of Silo City's 2017 land development plan uh, based on the reasoning in our packet. Thanks. All right, we have a motion and we have a second. Is there any current discussion? Question. Hearing none, we go to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. Okay. No guess at all. Oh, there's enough land. Don't get it. All right. Next, this is the public hearing five point three. Mayor Turner, we'll open that. We we didn't table this when we came out. No, it was advertised. Uh, Pursuant to this action for tonight, and uh, you don't take action for the action tonight. The earliest you can take action <laughs> to adopt the ordinance amending the charter and the resolution setting the referendum vote is next meeting. Uh, it would be the next one after that, but we wait too long because next week, by the time the final meeting, we would open the meeting. So all we need to do is just open the hearing. Open the hearing and see if anyone is here to speak to it. Got it. And now open the public hearing 5.2 R23 day 0501. Uh, there wasn't a time up sheet. Uh, so just take the speakers. Anybody want to speak on this issue? Or what is, it's about putting on a ballot form from uh, the mayor's term for two years before he's. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just picking on John. You have to get your name in there, Gary. I was prepared for this. Ron Dameron, 1108 House for West. Uh, 455 <coughs> municipalities in North Carolina. I, find, uh, I think I got it right. We're the only one who does two years instead of four years. And um, People have elected y'all to make rulings in their place where they all can't be. And if everything is put on a ballot, then I think we have a real long path, all this stuff building up. So I just uh, feel like it should be y'all's responsibility to do what you're supposed to do for the public, which is rule in whatever they see fit. But remember, this is 140 plus years ago. So, yeah. Give me a break. Uh, when uh, the mayor was supposed to clean up after horses and everything else, he didn't like what he did. You know, he went into fire and he got somebody else to only have to go for two years. So basically, I just you can't see us do anything different from what the rest of the state does, which is four years. That's all I have. You want to thank you, Mom? Anybody else wish to speak? I mean, I'll, I'll just make make one comment. I think that the um, you know we we did this public hearing. We had you know, we could have done we could have made this decision already, but we're choosing to put this on the ballot in in November. So I think that we're we're we've had the public hearing. We're going to you know listen to to the uh, uh, to Mr. Dameron. I you know I, I would agree with you. I think we you know. Be consistent with the rest of the state, but certainly it's going to be the um, you know, the the, the uh, community members that have the final say. So I, I I appreciate the opportunity. Anything else? All right, we're going to close up here. Any That's it. We're we'll going to have an uh, ordinance and also a resolution that sets uh, that requests the board of elections for all of the vote. Yeah. All of uh, should be there. All right. All right. Old business. Talk to Rick. Uh, 
Very good morning. I have Daniel Gallo with us from Williams Avenue now. He's going to do a quick uh, update about the current state of our forest preservation master plan. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council members, and thank you for the public uh, for this uh, time to participate and uh, present this. Um, we do have a, a different PowerPoint if we can get to it. Um, but just to give a brief overview, this is a, a quick emphasis on a quick little update on our work. Um, <clears throat> um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Think I'm going to be able to drive with this clicker, correct? No, you should be able to. Might ask you to scroll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, scroll that would be just fine. Like that's okay. Yeah, it may be because it's in Adobe, but no. Yeah, Jennifer was able to drive. So, but but yeah, go ahead. I can, I can click. <laughs> All right, I'll just tell you the next slide, but thank you. Um, so, this is the Parks and Recreation Comprehensive Plan. Uh, for the town of Siler City, we can go to the next slide. This effort is just beginning. This is just a, for your benefit, for the benefit of the public here, just to talk about next steps and how this pro project is going to progress. Like uh, Jack said, my name is Daniel Rao. I'm with Wither Drive and Nell. Uh, we're the consulting firm helping with this. I've been with them for six years as a uh, project manager, focusing on long range planning. Our company does everything from civil engineering to asset management, though. Uh, this little map here on the right just shows some of the work that my team is doing across North Carolina. We primarily serve North Carolina. Um, we can go to the next slide. So talking about this project at a big picture, this is a system-wide master plan. So this is just a set in each facility. This is looking at the department's programs, operations, greenway system, and everything in between. So it's a very comprehensive scope. It does build on our prior plans that the, that the town has adopted, so we will be looking at those. Uh, but it is a roadmap for our future. This is what we kind of call a playbook for the department so that they make informed decisions over the next 10 years. But really, at its heart, it's going to be a community vision. We're not making this plan. We're going to facilitate the public to help make this plan. So that's our goal. Uh, we then take the public's input and balance it with the achievable action items. Like I said, it's a 10-year plan. So... We look at funding and phasing to make sure that when we look at year three in the plan, we have low hanging fruit action items that build trust with the community, all the way to the 10 year plan where we talk about big action items and really uh, department defining actions. We can go to the next. So, at, at its core, there's four main steps to this pro project. The star there represents them. You're still on the step, first step which is the system inventory and analysis. We'll talk about each of these on the next four pages, but just wanted to highlight that this is a triangulated approach when it comes to data. We have qualitative data uh, from the community, quantitative data from our findings in the Census Bureau, and also observations that our field team have when we do assess the facilities. We can go to the next slide. So the first thing we do is system inventory analysis. This is where we are currently. If you look at the prior plans, as I mentioned, we evaluate the parks. We actually had all of our teams already go out and evaluate the parks. Um, so the next steps we're looking at is benchmarking with national standards, looking at the facilities and acreages compare with similar communities of this size. Then we'll look at level of service and how adequately the center city is being served by these recreation programs and facilities. We can go to the next slide. Just to highlight here, I wanted to talk about level of service, not just in the quantity of, let's say, basketball courts, but where those basketball courts are located. So a uh, part of this that's going to come out from this assessment is we're going to be geographically assessing the accessibility of these features. So for a basketball court, is it a half mile walking distance? Is it a one mile bike ride or is it a three mile short car ride or long bike ride to get to? That will help us identify areas inside our city that may be underserved by resources uh, from a geographic standpoint. We go to the next slide. So from the system inventory analysis, we go to the community needs assessment. That's already been done with our demographic research that we started. But really what this uh, the stage of the project shows is where we go to the community and get their input. So we've already started with the steering committee. We met with them prior to this meeting tonight. 
Um, we will host stakeholder interviews. We have a needs workshop coming up. There will be three workshops in total. And we have a community survey that's live now. All this stuff will be advertised through the town's social media accounts. And as the town sees fit, we go to the next one. So once we have the community info, we start developing the vision. This is kind of the 10 year plan for the park system. And we work pretty closely with staff and the steering committee during that time. This is the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee. We will keep you abreast of this project while we continue forward with it. Um, that goes into the second workshop, which is a vision workshop where we take it to the community and say, is this vision matching what you see from Saturday City Parks and Recreation? And then from there, we go to the next slide where we'll start developing action items and recommendations, which takes us to our final point here, the recommendations and implementation strategy. This is where we create the suite of recommendations for the Cyber City Parks and Recreation Network that can be new facilities, programs, it could be uh, changes to operations and maintenance, capital improvements if necessary. It can also be changes to a recommended uh, analysis of other planning documents like the development ordinance. Uh, with that, we'll have phasing strategies to make sure that it does have achievable goals between years one to 10. And then we'll identify funding sources. As I mentioned, it is a playbook. So we'll want to uh, equip the town staff with all of the funding mechanisms that we're aware of, leveraging Withers Ravenel's funding team for that purpose to identify those grant sources for we want. Can you go to the next slide, please? So next steps, first thing we've got is a public workshop. That's going to be June 7th from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the council chambers. Um, that's where we'll be kind of asking the first question of where are we today? Where, where are we today and kind of where do we want to see ourselves? Um, so that'll be open to the public drop-in, drop-out session. We also have our online survey open now that's available on the Parks and Recreation webpage. And then long term, just complete project perspective, we do anticipate bringing this forward around December 2023 for adoption. So that's pretty quick. I wanted to be wary of everyone's time. Uh, are there any questions? One thing on that online survey is open now. Are you advertising that for people to know to go there and it's a little out? We just started advertising or just launched it. So we will just start advertising through town social media. When we have that work session or that workshop on June 7th, we're going to also be passing out QR codes for that survey. Uh, the responsibility of advertising will be on the town, but we will also provide supplemental materials to help out with that. As far as when you think about um, parents who have children who are involved in recreation, have you? Are you looking at getting that information to them so that they can go on and, and, and fill out the survey? Yes. So instead of just um, expecting the town to get it out, but you all have the names of parents and all of that, so they can get the information and do the survey as well. Yes, ma'am. So, so one of the things that was brought up by this Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee members was that same thing. So we're going to be working with that team to identify who we can go through to make those connections and get those materials out to those parents and those children uh, to really spread the word. Also, it does about to even get it to churches because you have uh, older citizens who participate as well. So just trying to make sure that we can getting everybody as much as we possibly can. And we've also begun identifying uh, Hispanic champions, humans, organizations like that that we may also want to be going through to ensure we get everyone's voice with us. So, a very um, concept of that. Yeah, that was my point was how we were advertising because traditionally in the past, you know, it's a great thing. You know, the people who don't know it, don't know where to go, they can go through to get enough information to really do that happen. Well, that will be our challenge in the next coming weeks. We'll be working closely with staff and with the steering committee to identify all areas that we can pursue to make sure that the staff is advertised and the public is aware. I've got a question. And Jack, this is probably for you. Um, we did a, a, a Parks and Rec master plan a couple of years back, once since, once since I was on the board. Is this replacing that? Is it updating that? Because yeah. we, spent, we spent quite a bit of time, money, and effort on that. Mm -hmm. So that was a part, part specific, I just more very far. 
Okay, this plan will evaluate that current plan and make sure it's still relevant. Do we need a population increase or voice of this plan? I think that one, that plan may be some minor issues. Uh, yeah, because for some reason I thought we had a new that was a it was the overall parks and recreation plans. I thought we were talking about other you know other facilities that, that were part of it. We were so we evaluated and looked at for a potential recreation center out there on different square fields, trying to multi square fields. Yeah. This is this is more of an inclusive problem that I have. Uh, but it was a uh, No, this one, this one had, this one had, I mean, we had a, a it was it included great park because we had, we had the, the centrally, centrally located, there were four, four softball fields that were, were, were um, being relocated. We had a, um, we had a, a pond, a pond that had, you know, walking trails and we had a community center over there where the soccer field is across from Brookwood. Yeah. How was the park? Yeah. Okay. But those both of those plans, the what I believe is the 2015 the previous comprehensive plan, the Brave Park, those are brought in as we mentioned the previous planning studies. We incorporate that and look at the trends of those previous plans, see what we're accomplishing, and still outstandings, and then go for that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on that? Any okay, thank you. Any other questions before we move on? No, next up, new business. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a uh, new tick coming to propose a staff countertop in the municipal code of memo. Uh, this is the right-of-way schedule of each and packet staff provided memo. Uh, this is a uh, I just speak to our attention after a conversation with myself and the public works director of the town, and I have been talking about working with nuisances in the right of way. Um, the town code also has a nuisance section. And it's clear that if you have tall grass, we can send out letters to heavy coating grass all the way to the edge of the road. It stays down in uh, that section. But it's it's not clear and, and actually, uh, you know, left us out of the, of the gap. That's been our interpretation for several years. If it's the other nuisances that are in that section, and we have a lot of nuisances, if you, if you get to page 39 uh, of the schedule, uh, of the schedule eight, right. I, I just highlighted a couple of them, starting with uh, on that page, letters B, E, G, H, J, and K are a number of nuisances that we can send letters to as long as they're on the, the, the lot of person office. But once those nuisances are in the right of way, the ordinance is the way it reads to uh, allow Chris or our clinical officer to send a letter and clean up. So what happens is there are items that are listed as nuisances. That the town code work uh, crew picks up as a part of their um, trash collection pickup of, of businesses that are placed out by there to be picked up. Like 
flynn and their leaves and so forth. But there are some things that our citizens put out that public works is not authorized or directed to fix it. And we don't have a letter that can send them to the police system to do that. So the reason for this amendment is to go back to uh, page 36. That's what we read here. Some of the tweets in the way this section reads, it shall be unlawful for the owner of the to be lot or parcel. And that's that's pretty clear to find is that a lot is outside of the body of this. They're, they're not boundaries. Uh, a land in the town to commit to exist in any such lot or parcel in any condition which may be declared to be noxious, detrimental to health, or constant business. So um, on your property, we send you a letter to have it cleaned up. It's all the property. We don't have that ability. But we believe Section B allows us to do the actual drafting for uh, be considered by the town board line. We have any law or parcel of land, including but not limited to the following uh, joining, abutting, and or adjacent right away, the edge of the surface of the initial travel way of any street or highway, adjacent sidewalk, adjacent grass strip, curb, gutters, grass wells, ditches, and or one half of the adjacent house. And so this allows the code book department now send letters. When, when the business and then apply it, place it out in the middle of the road boundary, they're not going to be picked up by public worship or, or moved by public worship. They're moving to the center left and have that out of the business. Now we're probably going to set them on an area of no man's land. So the worst can pick it up, code of you can't send a letter in the trash or wherever it stays out there. If it doesn't meet the people criteria. So then we close that gap. And hopefully we'll have a great communication between the code of the public works. About this is not, we can't pick up a code for the letter. That's the purpose of this. Any other questions? Okay, we'll go back to the city of Jackson. Yeah, we'll go back to the city of Jackson. So, even though it might be on the property, if somebody else threw it out there <coughs> on your property, you still responsible for what somebody else threw it out. We 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 have to address that. So um there's an example on um I'll give you an example. North Fifth Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you an example then we got recently. North Fifth Avenue is near Land Museum. Uh -huh. There's a house that's been uh, remodeled and uh, the owner put a lot of their brush from the neighboring on and it was a big problem. Well, we found out that uh, who put it there. We talked to the environmental enforcement officer in the county and they had to send them a letter. Or dumping illegal dumping is what that's called. Okay. And so uh, to answer your question, <coughs> we we don't have that authority to determine who put the trash there, who did it. So we do see nuisances on the property, proper property, then that's not person we got to know. For. And um, if it is illegal dumping, we can get that in work and find the fourth officer in bonds to do that type of investigation, which is more of a law enforcement thing rather than code enforcement. <laughs> I have a question. I don't know if it relates to this or not. Uh, I've seen a couple of instances where people, I've written this wildflower garden, and they're planning to right? they clean the sidewalk from there, and there's all kinds of, there's wildflowers in there, and when they bloom the fruit, but there's all kinds of weeds and everything else in there. It's not, it's not mowed, kept up, or anything like that. Get your pictures, uh, and, and we tried to identify some of that in, in on pages uh, 38 and 39 a couple of years ago, where we started talking about um, what the exceptions are to grass and weeds. And so we've got a, a list of predictions, um, I guess to say, and it, and it says things like growing and producing vegetable plants, uh, trees and oil scrubs, crops, and flowers. So there are some things that we're going to identify that we need to However, we we'll still go back to the beginning of the section, and it says that um, any plants, place of dense, heavy growth of weeds, grass, or other environment, or other noxious vegetables, other than you know, over twelve type. And that's the first measure. And then we get into things like um, a place of growth, environment of any. When such condition is causing a breeding ground for rodents, or the focal point for any other nuisance. So we have to determine that if that is what it is, it is a a nuisance We have to move away to that. That's, that doesn't happen as often. It's clearly mm -hmm. when you've got a yard with you know, 16 inch grass, that's pretty easy. But when we get into scrub areas or typically landscape areas, we got to think about it a little bit. And um, 
we have to have on the culture to figure out if it is a new system or it's going to create a new system. If it is, if that kind of thing is addressed, I think so. If you look up the media today, on to look at and take some photos and take it to the exam, it'll be very snake the road. So it's not just an ordinary bar. Yes, First example is it uh, we we don't grab or you talking about all of what we have to It's a pre right there. Mm -hmm. yes. I'll take a look at it. Yeah. Yeah. But some of that's town property in there. And of course, we've got a free. Uh, I'll take a look at that. And see what we do. So if I turn off Marvel King on the 12th, so we're going to have to take that bridge. Okay. I thought we would surround on the property. You could find the info. That's right. To find a little. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a picture. Broke Street Bridge. I got it. I live in Appreciate that. Why are you talking about grass? Thanks for getting the grass. I'm going to get the old cost too. Yeah, we have yeah, some of that. Yeah, we can get it in the state. We had a conversation with the owners, and um, they think they, they, they get about the rest of the day. I don't know about the rest of them. I got several phone calls about that. It was a surprise to the ones who did it. Because it did, even after we had notified me and so forth, they didn't think they cared about it. Thank you. Hopefully, we're going to see them. The house inside. The so living church over here. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, Chad, yeah. you're talking about oh, something. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure. Huh? Rest the period. West of them. West of them. Wow. Is that West? Is it West of the church over there? No, it's over here. You come out here, uh, my library. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a house that's right there beside it. I don't know if anybody lives there or anything. I, you know, I was just traveling, and I thought it was a house, and it had real tall grass. I didn't. I don't know if anybody was living there. I thought it was a rental home, but um, I saw it sadly. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. You'll hear it. What do you need from us? I actually need a motion. A motion to uh, consider the ordinance on page uh, 36, 37. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if that one, or I'll ask, just to add to the motion that the ordinance becomes effective for final adoption that claims that it doesn't appear to be always in the back. Okay. It's not a big deal. Just thank you. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to do, I'll make a motion to adopt the nuisance right of way ordinance May the 15th, 2023. Did I get it? And it becomes immediately. It becomes immediately effective. Second. No motion is second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those in favor like sign. Motion here. Thank you. All right, man. Oh, we've been here a while. Uh, this is a photograph. We got a tiny budget presentation from RE. Uh, and here's y'all interested in beginning that. Uh, the positive news. Uh, we've been able to fill several positions. You know, in the yellow uh, package, we've got more reports in the very last page. You'll see. Uh, several new hires because of this sort of business. Uh, new street maintenance workers, general spouse. We've finally been able to fill um, a building maintenance mechanic position with uh, Shannon Shear. Dr. Matt has been hired to three to three. We met uh, Evan Hutchinson tonight, the finance panelist. And we also today we had uh, Jason Osley start to fill our final three sergeant position as well as Gary Kidd, uh, both of those from Randolph County Sheriff's Office. And um, our school out of Great Park was able to pass its inspection today. So that will be ready to go. And uh, numerous uh, staff 
I really want to honor you. Part of the school day to send us to like our position. Uh, I think we're going to be ready to get the uh, school season uh, started. And uh, the ending note uh, this is Jack Clellan's last meeting with us to see if you find any parts of that direction to take to the meeting on the weekend. So we wish him the best and he's going to turn it up. That's all. Uh, let me add one thing to this. Okay. Uh, I have got a couple of phone calls here in the last week from out of South City. Some of the folks out of South City Airport have evidently become a hot spot for people who go out there and party and carry on in the parking lot and they leave the beer cans and everything else out there and all that. Could you please do that? I can't imagine. Well, I know. Yeah, but evidently, and from what I understand is, I know there's cameras out there. They know what a camera calls, so they can speak. We don't get in the picture. So you know the local problem. <laughs> so if you just look into that, because it evidently it's, it's a reoccurring thing. Thank you. Department report. Anything different from what we got back? No, sir. Uh, and attorney. I have a good name. Governing body comments. I hear none. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Dunn. I'm sorry. I just wanted to uh, tell Jack, uh, Jack that chicken circle is really nice. And also, we don't care um, for us providing. The chicken. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm glad I didn't rain this year. <laughs> Next year, Miss Moon and I have a different strategy. We're not going to follow the rules like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, anything else? All right, I have a motion to go into closed session in North Carolina Democratic 143 318 